What's up everybody, welcome back. And before we jump into today's video, I just wanna say thank you to all the new subscribers that started following me on this channel. And we actually just broke over 20,000 subscribers last week. So again, thank you very much uh, for helping me hit that milestone and hopefully we can continue to grow. Now, getting back to the video at hand, I wanna talk about the new and improved Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro, which has been out for quite some time now but I've been using the older version for the past few years and it's helped me capture some really amazing tracked images of the Milky Way galaxy. However, this thing is built like a tank. It is extremely heavy and has an awkward profile because it has the adjustable base attached to it. So we're gonna go over some of the changes that they made to the updated Ioptron Pro. And right off the bat, we could see that they made the base removable now. So now we have the option to bring this heavy base along with us or just take this by itself. And also they made the shell of this Ioptron out of plastic to help cut some weight. Now at the bottom of this, you could screw a quick release plate and now you can use it directly with your tripod, whether you have a ball head or a pan and tilt head like I do. Now this Ioptron right here weighs a little over a pound and a half, and if you add the base to it, it's up to two and a half pounds. But the great thing is, we don't need to bring this base along with us anymore, so if you need to travel light, or you need to save some space, we could totally eliminate this base altogether. Another update that they did that I'm so happy about is the built-in rechargeable battery, which the company claims to get about 24 hours of runtime, depending on the temperature conditions you're operating at. And I would also imagine the payload would affect this as well, so just keep that in mind. Now speaking of payload, the manual recommends getting a counterweight if you're using a star tracker with a camera and lens that weighs over two and a half pounds. And with the counterweight, you could go up to around six and a half pounds. I was actually really discouraged when I heard this because the whole point of getting this lightweight tracker is so I wouldn't have to carry around an extra weight with me like a counterweight. So what I ended up doing on a recent trip to California is going against those recommendations and putting nearly five pounds of gear on this star tracker without using any counterweights. I shot with my Nikon D800, which weighs a little more than two pounds and various lenses. The heaviest of them being my Nikon 14 to 24, which weighs in around two and a half pounds. So how did it perform? The shots came out awesome, which I'll show you guys later. And I just want to make it clear that I take no responsibility if you damage your tracker by overloading it with heavy gear. But with that being said, I honestly don't think it's going to be an issue as long as you're not putting these really large, heavy telephoto lenses on this little tracker. So just use some common sense and try not to burn out the motor. Just use some common sense, common sense, common sense. Now, a few weeks ago, I did test the Move Shoot Move Tracker, which is probably the world's smallest tracker at the moment, but there were some quality control issues, and the product does come directly from China, so it could take about two to six weeks just to get this tracker. So basically, what I'm trying to do is find alternatives for people that don't want to take that risk with their money. Ioptron has been around for many years, so the quality is relatively good, and it is much easier to exchange a defective product if you ever got one. Size-wise, the MSM tracker is about the same height and width as the Ioptron Pro. However, it does beat it in thickness when we turn it and check out their profiles. Now, the weight of these two units is about the same. So basically, the Ioptron just takes up a little bit more space in your bag when you're traveling, but not by much. The Optron can also track stars or the moon in both the southern and northern hemisphere, and it's relatively easy to set this up, especially if you use the apps that will help you find Polaris, which they make for both Androids and iPhones. I'll put the links for the manual and those apps in the description below for those that want to find out more information about this tracker. Now let's jump to the computer and check out some of the track shots that I got at different focal lengths using the Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro. All right, so here we are on the computer side of things, and I'm going to show you guys different focal lengths using the Ioptron Star Tracker Pro and also different exposure times. So the first shot we have here is at 14 millimeters, ISO 1600, F4 at 199 second exposure, so just over three minutes. And if we zoom in here at three to one, you can see how well the stars came out. They're nice and sharp. Um, they get a little distorted towards the corners because of the wide-angle lens, but for the most part they came out really nice 
This was at Alabama Hills in California. Such a beautiful place to visit. Um, I really like going there because of the landscape that it offers and there's not that much light pollution. I mean, we have a little bit right here, but it's really not that bad. All right, so here's another shot at 14 millimeters and this one's at 215 seconds, so around three and a half minutes. And if we zoom in here, um, it looks really good. I probably could have pushed it to four or maybe even five minutes at this focal length. But yeah, that looks good. Uh, I haven't even edited this shot yet, so I'm already really happy with the results that I was getting. And let's check it out at 24 millimeters. Same thing, ISO 1600, F4, and this is at 180 seconds or 81 seconds, so around three minutes. And, uh, a 24 three minute exposure it still looks really good a little bit of lens distortion near the corners but the center of the image looks really good now here's a shot at 50 millimeters this was at f3.5 ISO 2000 and 49 seconds so I didn't go a full minute here but I definitely could have um, that looks really good I also threw on my 85 millimeter lens and I shot this at 90 seconds. So a minute and a half at f3.2, ISO 1250. And if we look at the tail end of Scorpius, that came out really awesome. I'm digging the colors um, and the stars came out nice and sharp. Again, I'm at three to one. So uh, there's Jupiter, yeah. You know, it did a really fantastic job. This is a minute and a half, and I probably could have went up to two or even three minutes, depending how well I dialed in my scope, but this came out awesome. Yeah, so this worked out really well. I was a little discouraged because it was recommended that you get a counterweight if you're going to be using, you know, a payload heavier than two and a half pounds which I was with my Nikon D800 and the 24 millimeter lens and the ball head that, that comes out to around five pounds. Now I didn't exceed the 6.6 .6, you know, max weight limit that it has, but I was still using around five pounds without a counterweight. Um, it seemed to work fine for me and I'm sure if I had the counterweight, I could probably even get longer exposure times. But the whole point of this tracker is for me to, to travel really lightweight and you know take up less space. So if I have to get a counterweight, that's counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. I honestly don't think you really need it unless you're trying to get uh, longer exposures around five minutes long and you have some pretty heavy gear. So I definitely recommend not using a super telephoto lens on this type of tracker. I think it's meant for people that are trying to do wide angle shots of the Milky Way or like mid telephoto shots using like a 50 millimeter prime lens or 85 or 105. You don't want to push this tracker too much and have it burn out or something like that. So just uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then let's just show you some shots that I blended together with those track shots. So I took the foreground at astronomical twilight and then I moved the tracker to an open area and started tracking the sky and then I blended these images together. Yeah, so here's one more shot of me taking a tracked image and blending it with a foreground that I took at Astronomical Twilight. You know, this is a great technique for somebody that's trying to create a really clean night image. You know, they don't want any noise. Um, I have to do this a lot for stock agencies because they want the cleanest night shot possible, especially if people are trying to enlarge the photo really big and, you know, they just want it as clean as possible. So this is a great technique that I like to use. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, you know, as I was saying earlier, I think this is a good alternative for those that don't want to get the move, shoot, move star tracker. I know it's a little bit thicker and takes up a little more space, but you're also getting a little bit more peace of mind by getting this tracker over the move, shoot, move. Um, I'm also going to try and get a hold of the slick star tracker, which is really small and compact as well. I wrote to them, I didn't hear back yet, so I'm going to try and reach out to them on Instagram as well, and hopefully I can get one in my hands in a few weeks and also do a review on that, because I'm really on the hunt to find the most compact and lightweight star trackers that produce really good results for us, you know, especially those that are traveling and uh, don't want to fill up their bag with a ton of tracking gear. 
So hopefully these videos will help you guys out in determining what will work best for you. And uh, just stay tuned for future trackers I'm going to try and get a hold of. All right, guys. I will talk to you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Please like and subscribe.